Thank you, Jesus. Let us all rise before the Lord as I read in your hearing Psalms 100. It reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. I want you that will flood the altar. Come to the altar. Come, come, come. Come. Hallelujah. Come, come. Let the brothers come. Let the brothers, A1 brothers, lead the way. Come to the altar. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift our hands unto thee. We have come before you singing. We have thanksgiving in our hearts. And then we plead the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary's cross with us in mind. Not just us, but all of mankind. We plead that blood that justified us. And then we plead the blood of Jesus Christ that was sprinkled on the mercy seat in heaven that proved that you came and you conquered. You died and you rose again, hallelujah, with all power in your hand. Lord God, we are asking you, first of all, to open up our hearts, hallelujah, and place in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits, in our bodies, the will of God that we may please you in all of our thinking and our saying and our doing. We're asking you, Lord God, to receive our thanksgiving, our praise, and our worship. Right now, we stop and we pause to clap our hands and to shout hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, here from this house, your children, we are the children of light, and we thank you. We are grateful for the testimony that you have placed in our lives. Hallelujah. The word of God is truth in our lives. We bless you, and we ask you to empower us. Make us experts in the law and in the grace and in the customs of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your word of deliverance in our mouth that when we witness, your spirit will take hold to those who we witness to that they will be believers as we are. In the name of Jesus, we applaud you. We shout hallelujah. We ask you to bind the spirit of the adversary. Loose the holy angels to do war in the spirit of God, winning souls unto you. We applaud you. We bless you. We confess you. And we ask these blessings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ our risen Savior, and all the people of God said in Jesus Christ's name, in Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. Praise God. We praise you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We lift you. 
Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you every praise because you've been so good, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I can't praise him enough because he's been so good to me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Better than 
and adoration unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is none like you. You are awesome and you are excellent. And your name shall be praised. Oh, give thanks. Help me give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. He's a good God. Worthy of great praise. We thank you and we bless you. Glory. Love you, Lord. You've been a good God all week long. You've kept us. You kept our minds. You kept our minds. Glory, 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 glory. I do that need some more up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, tell three or four people. He's been a great God to me. Greater than words can ever explain. And that's why I praise him. That's why I lift him up. That's why I magnify his name. It's why my heart Come on, da da ba ba sa. A little more push here. How many heart worshipers are in the room? We bless him. Give him praise. Glory. Thank you. Glory. Come on, move out of your seat. Go tell five people God's got everything under control. We didn't come here today to worry. We came to worship. God's got everything, everything, everything everywhere. God's dealing with everybody. Don't make your enemies your footstool. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Come on, saints. Let's get our praise up a little higher here. Let the high praise. I feel the Holy Ghost be in your mouth. Let your praise be a weapon of war. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. He's a mighty God. He's mightier than your sickness, infirmity, or disease. 
whatever it is that you're facing on this week, put a praise in front of it. You've got to advance your praise. Send Judah first. Before you go to the doctor, send the praise ahead of you. Before you enter into that legal matter, send the praise ahead of you. Before you go back to that job with those difficult people that don't want to see you advance, go ahead and put a praise in front of you. Doesn't matter what happened on that or last week. God want to move. Oh, 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 the Spirit says at the high places. And the high place. It's got to come down. Send the praise down into Louisville, Kentucky. Let it get there before David and Margaret Rainey get there. You didn't hear me back there. I said, send the praise up to Louisville, Kentucky so that when David and Margaret Rainey Come in that church on Friday morning. That heaviness has got to live. Don't you worry about Laron. Laron made it. And I'm on my way. If you're on your way to heaven, praise him. Like you're already there. turn me around. I'm pressed toward the mark on my way and I won't turn around. Clap your hands like Jesus is in the room. On my way to heaven and I'm so glad. On my way to heaven and I'm so Sanctified and holy and I'm so glad that the world can't do me no more. When you see me coming, I got him on my mind. When, when you, you see me coming, I got him on my mind. I said, when you see me coming, I got him on my mind. I got, got Jesus on my mind. Bless that wonderful name of Bless that wonderful name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Help me bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There we are. Come on, clap your hands. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Power in the name of Jesus.
come to praise his name. I 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 come to lift him up. 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 I come to clap my hands. 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 I come to hear the word. 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 I come to do my dance. You're standing in one place, standing in one place. But the Bible says, praise him in the dance. It's in the Bible. Praise him in the dance. I come to do my dance. I come to do my dance. While you're praising him, he's regulating your sugar. While you're praising him, he's giving you strength. He's giving you strength. He's giving you strength. The joy of the Lord. Joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Is my strength. Yeah. 
a great God and he's doing great things he has done great things whereof I am glad oh taste and see that the Lord is good blessed is the man that trust in him some trust in horses some trust in chariots but I will put my trust in the name of our God. Give God a praise. Sister Kearns is in church this morning. Lord, I thank you for touching her body, giving her strength for the journey. Well, I want to praise God for blessing Sister Sabrina Johnson and Sister Marlene Kirk with another birthday. Today is both of their birthdays. And I want to celebrate them and praise God for his keeping power. If you can make it from one year to the next, and if you make it from one day to the next, in times like these, it is a blessing. Well, this is a dynamic supernatural week and month here at Calvary, and I'm going to ask Evangelist Brogdon if she would come at this time and share with us and with the viewing audience some exciting things that we have coming up on this week and this month. This is a super busy month here at Calvary. And would you give yourselves a hand for new beginnings on Friday night? I want to thank the Calvary family. There were so many that were with me Friday night at New Beginnings Outreach Ministries. Your presence, your prayers, and your praises shifted the atmosphere and made a tremendous difference. And while we were over there praising the Lord at New Beginnings, three souls were over here getting baptized in Jesus' name. We're praising the Lord because the word from the Lord is our add to the church seven days a week. And we're just believing that by faith. Let us say praise the Lord to Evangelist Brogdon and Lady Quinn. And to the household of faith, I say praise the Lord. We honor our pastor. We have a God-chosen pastor, anointed from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, and we give God praise for him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
Well, we're in preparation for the gathering, and this fast is a blessing. It is already profiting each one of us who determine within ourselves we're going to make this sacrifice. Yes, it is a blessing to sacrifice for the Lord. So we want to encourage you, if you haven't been on, jump on so that you can be in the blessing flow. Well, we've begun our spiritual preparation. Now we're moving into some elements of our natural preparation. And that's including beautifying, cleaning up, and enhancing the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have, through Elder Bowers and the board, we are excited because the painters are going to come in, Lord willing, and take care of some of our spots. Somebody ought to be happy. Somebody ought to be happy. Glory to God. Have you noticed the new front doors on the church? Amen. Woo! Glory to God. Some who have had to tug, pull, brace, and whatever, the doors are brand spanking new. And we give God praise for them. And we give God praise for you donating to that. So we give God honor. So we're moving in Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. Monday and Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can come in, bring your rags, bring your vacuums. There are different areas of the church that we want to spruce up. You know, many hands make any labor light. Yes, ma'am. So the more, it, you know, Brother Jamie, the Sibley, Deacon, he can't do it all by himself. Is that right, Deacon? The amen. He needs all of us. This is our church. Right. This is not Pastor Tyson's church. This is our church because it belongs to our God. Amen. So please, let's get involved. On Tuesdays, you can volunteer before noonday Bible stay, study and after that midweek manna. Now, we need every able-bodied brother, please, immediately after service, Deacon, run down here, immediately after service to put, please, your strength into action because Deacon Assembly, what are we going to do after morning service? We're going to clear out the multi-purpose room so I can strip and wax the floors to get it ready for the seekers gathering. That's a lot of chairs down there. And we don't want him to have to lift every chair by himself. Amen? Amen. Now, I said the brothers, but you know, sisters, we know how to handle. Then come on, somebody. You know, but we honor, we honor the male factor of our house. And they're going to be down immediately following um, the children's church dismissal, putting that together. Also, where else do you need assistance? you need any assistance outside? Yes, uh, actually getting some of the, uh, the weeds and stuff pulled up outside on the other side on Dellison Street. Right. We need, in other words, we need you. Also, we want to make sure that you're aware beginning this coming Tuesday and the following Tuesday, midday, manna will be here in the sanctuary. Somebody say September the 14th. September the 14th. What's happening September the 14th, Sister Quinn? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise September the, Lord. the 14th is a very special day That's here right. at the Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church. Yes. There's a lady who resides in this house that we want to celebrate in a special way, and that is our very own Pastor Krista M. Tyson. So we want to celebrate her in a great way. Now, we know we're on our fast, so we won't have cake and ice cream, but we're going to have a little treat for you. So please... Come out, be a part of saturation prayer first, and then we're going to celebrate our first lady. Bring your expressions of love, whatever it might be. If it's a monetary offering or it's a, a gift that you decided you wanted to give her, please bring it on Thursday. Remember, this coming Thursday is a special day here at Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church. Amen. Well, Sister Sherry, you could have talked about uh, the cleanup and about the floors, and you could have talked about First Lady's Breakfast. The reason why the three of us are up here is a three-fold cord is not easily broken. Yes. 
And it's telling you that we need each other. We need each other. So Calvary, let's do what we do best, draw together and be able to celebrate not only First Lady's birthday, but the preparation of our church for the gathering. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Can we say amen again? Elder Baldwin, if you'll come, Dr. Charles Baldwin, and just reiterate what we're doing today. I believe this is Big Give, Big Give Sunday. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Bishop, a good God bless you to you. Today is our first big turn in for our faith in action to decrease the balance that we yet have. I don't know. We should be around 30,000 some, someplace. Listen, from 2.5 million. Oh, you better hear me, somebody. From a church up on the hill, 2.5 million, we only owe now, in less than five years, about 30,000. So please, fill out your vessels, your offering, $70 this Sunday, or you can pay the whole 200. Together, we can do this. We want to do it by the end of November, have it all completely paid off. So that's what we're doing this morning, Pastor. No stress, but we need to bless this place where God strives, dwells in the midst of us. Thank you. God loves you. Give yourselves a big God bless you. Come on, church. I appreciate you, the officers and the shepherds. We appreciate the sacrifices that our congregation has made to bring us to this tremendous <coughs> point of transition. The givers are blessed. It's always more blessed to give than it is to receive. Uh, Keith, Junior, I want you to bring your wife down here, right here down front. And I want you to share how God blesses givers. Let me get a microphone for him uh, on this left side, right down front. I want, uh, uh, don't they look good? <laughs> Brother Keith Cheatham and Lord Cheatham Jr. Son, I like that jacket you got on. That jacket is right full of flight. Receive them by saying, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy. We bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. You are a good God. Hallelujah. Um, the reason why me and my lovely wife are up here today. Um, First of all, there's two reasons why uh, we may not have been up here. For one, we both don't like public speaking. We're a little shy in front of people. Two, I started to get a little under the weather, so we almost stayed home today. My wife had a little pain in her body that she normally doesn't have, but we said we're going to press our way because the saints of God needed to hear what God has done for us. Um, so going back to 2019, um, me and my wife, uh, we were just dating at the time. Uh, we took our first trip to Miami, and uh, you know how, like, you go on vacation, and sometimes there's people on the sidewalk, they, you know, ask you to uh, sign up for something. You do a, they do a little presentation or what have you. Um, so we got suckered into doing that, but they, they were going to give us a gift, so we said, you know, maybe we'll just go. We won't get it, but we'll just get the gift or the coupon or whatever. And so before we even got in there, my friend, I called her my lady friend, that's an inside joke. At the time, my lady friend, she said, Keith, we're not going to uh, get anything when we go in here. And so she was already acting like my wife then, telling me what to do and everything. But um, so anyways, by the time the presentation was over, there was a, a gentleman who did a very good job at selling the, the timeshare. That's what it was. And uh, so we ended up getting it. And then from 2019 up until now, uh, we actually only got to use a timeshare one time. And I don't get a whole lot of vacation, and my wife, she gets way more vacation than I do. So anyways, we decided that, okay, maybe this timeshare isn't for us. You know, so like maybe we should just get out of this, because we were paying a couple hundred dollars a month for something that we didn't really get to use. So um, 
we were trying to find a way out of it. Like, how can we get out of this? Maybe we should find an attorney or something. We thought about contacting the Brantleys to see if they knew if they could refer us to someone. Um, but we didn't end up doing that. We were praying about it. I was praying about it. Um, my wife was more reluctant, I think, because she, you know, wanted to still kind of keep it. But um, I heard something on the Steve Harvey show saying that if you um, want to get out of a timeshare, there was some, some guy who could help you get out of it. But she said sometimes that people, you know, they say they're going to help you, but then you're stuck in it. So anyways, um, I was going to call Steve Harvey, the Steve Harvey show or whatever. Didn't end up doing that. And so out of nowhere, uh, I think my wife, I was at work. She said, we got a letter in the mail um, stating that there were going to be some um, new owners or someone that wanted to buy the property from the current people. We were with Westgate. That was the name of our um, timeshare. And so it was stating that um, they were going to buy the property. There were some things that needed to get renovated, so they're going to tear things down. So we didn't, we weren't going to be able to utilize it. So long story shorter, um, basically God has relieved us of that debt. We owe eight thousand dollars left on the timeshare, and we're able to get out of it. And there's nothing else that we have to pay. So that's the blessing in itself. Yes, it is. And um, so that's why when this man of God, you know, has us do our declarations, you have to receive that for yourself and believe it. You know, it's not just something that he says because there's nothing else to say or anything. Like, there's, this is a spiritual thing. But wait, there's more. That was a debt paid off. But not only did God do that for us, we also received a letter in the mail um, saying that people who paid their timeshares off, or even if, I guess, if you didn't pay it off, um, that they were going to reimburse you for the money that you put into it. So, amen. So we were, uh, the letter that we got said that we were supposed to receive possibly two checks. One was going to be six weeks after, what, June? After it sold. And then the second check was supposed to be around December, early January. And then we got a, another letter saying that well, maybe we're not going to get that because they had to do some other things. So we were expecting it, but we're, we were both talking amongst each other. We're like, well, that's fine. God did what he had to do. He already got us out of it. So this is just a, a you know, a bonus yes. to receive something. So um, recently, though, um, we got a check, not a check, but a letter in the mail. And my wife was like, this Westgate, they get on my nerves. But what she was doing was she was surprising me. Because when I looked at the letter, I, I could tell, you know, how the, the back of the check, you can see where you signed it. There was actually a check attached. We got our first check last week that was for some thousands of dollars that God has reimbursed us for. So God did it. If he did it for us, he could do it for you. God bless you. All right, son. Give the Lord a great praise. I think he said thousands, plural. Oh, I wish you'd praise him like it was your thousands. I want you to know that God is still in the miracle business. And we have a miracle that is in church on this morning. One of our daughters that we've been praying for. And God has touched her body. She's on her way to a total recovery. And I want us to thank God that our daughter, Jocelyn Moss, is in this service on today. God bless you, daughter. We're just praising God for you and your total healing. 100% recovery. And she's sitting next to another little miracle. Give God praise for Darnell. Back teaching school. God is renewing her strength. We praise him. Now all she needs is to be delivered from being a Michigan fan then she'll have total victory. I'd like to ask you if you're able to remain until the benediction today. 
There are just a few things that I would like to share with you this morning in preparation for the upcoming Seekers Gathering and all of you that are joined us online that are making preparations to be with us here in Youngstown September 21st through the 23rd. We are in a time of preparation and consecration in fasting and prayer. And I just stopped by to share a few thoughts that the Spirit of the Lord has impressed upon me for where God is taking us next. In just a few moments, Elder Bowers is coming to extend the invitation to salvation and for those of you that are in need of special prayer. The altar will be open for you and God will meet you here. But I want to take just a few moments to consider a passage of scripture. But before I go to the text, I want to celebrate Pastor Kenny Eldridge and the Jesus Celebration Choir for the tremendous reunion concert that they had on last night at New Bethel Baptist Church. If you were not at the concert, you can view the concert at New Bethel Baptist Church, Youngstown. And if you're a gospel music lover, it will be a blessing to your spirit. But I also want to celebrate our minister of worship, who was the music director for that tremendous concert, Minister John Austin. <laughs> Phenomenal job in bringing that together. And it was a tremendous experience. And I'm just grateful that Youngstown is coming together. And that's, that's good for the kingdom of God. We need one another. We may sit reverently in the presence of the Lord in consideration of the third chapter of the book of Ezra. Ezra chapter 3. And I will be reading with you beginning at verse number 6. Ezra chapter 3 and verse number 6. We shall consider this passage of scripture. Ezra chapter 3, verse number 6. From the first day of the seventh month, began they to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord. But the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not yet laid. This is somewhat where we are in our building process here at Calvary. The foundation of the temple has not yet been laid. But they gave money also unto the masons and to the carpenters, and meat and drink and oil unto them of Zidon and to them of Tyre. Preparations, materials for the house of God to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the Sea of Joppa according to the grant that they had of Cyrus, king of Persia. I want to prophesy this morning that not only will the saints give into the construction of the new Calvary Cathedral, but God is going to send help. He's going to send us help from secular sources to help build this city of God according to the grant that they had. You know, the Bible is always ahead of schedule. Verse 8. Now in the second year of their coming unto the house of God at Jerusalem, 
In the second month began Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Yeshua, the son of Josadak, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all they that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem, and appointed the Levites, listen, dominion, from 20 years old and upward to set forward the work of the house of the Lord. Today's message is entitled, First the Altar and Then. First the Altar and then. Father, we honor you and praise you that you have brought us to this most strategic position. And now, Lord, those things which the man of God spoke to us many years ago, we have now come to the time of the manifestation of his words of prophecy. Not one of them shall fall to the ground. And I praise you for the remnant that remains, whom you have empowered to bring this vision to pass. Now, Lord, you have strategically called for the intercessors to return to Youngstown as you are now setting forth the spiritual momentum to bring us to the dynamic conclusion of 2023 and into the miraculous things of God that are going to manifest in our lives, our homes, our families, our businesses, our holistic well-being in the year 2024. Now, Father, I praise you for the spirit of prayer that is in this house called Calvary and how you are rekindling that passion for the presence of God through prayer in us. Now I pray in Jesus' name that as you are preparing us to bless those that are coming to worship with us during the seekers gathering, that you will honor the sacrifices that we are making in presenting our bodies as living sacrifices and coming before you in the sacred ordinances of fasting and prayer. May God himself incline his ear unto the prayers of the righteous. Hear those secret prayers that the saints are offering unto thee, even in the wee hours of the morning. Some of them were before you even on last night, seeking you for a touch from God touch Deacon Oscar Underwood while I worship you, while we pray, while we seek your face, Sister Elise Andrews and Pastor Candy, touch my son, Elder Eric Callahan, and those that are on this line that are viewing this morning, whose desire it is to be in this house, but Lord, send your spirit into their homes, into their dwelling places. May they feel the tangibility of the power of God through the prayers and the worship and the praises of the saints. We thank you in advance for miracles, signs, and wonders that are coming to the seekers gathering. We conclude this prayer by lifting our hands unto the Lord in worship, in adoration, and the spirit of expectation. Now give us the spirit of prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank God. Amen. 
first the altar and then. I would like to say to us that it is impossible to go through life without experiencing some disappointments. Sometimes trusted confidants betray their vows to discretion. People make promises that they don't keep. Sometimes relationships that we thought would last for a lifetime regrettably end in divorce. Sibling relationships sometimes devolve into hostile breaches. It's a painful thing to raise children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord, and then they get grown and forsake long-held spiritual values. The business that we thought was bulletproof goes into bankruptcy. Disappointments. A medical procedure that we thought was going to help our case ends up making us worse than better. Stock markets crash. Economies go into recession. Sometimes people we trusted betray us. And very often we disappoint ourselves with poor decision making. Living life ensures that you are going to experience some disappointment. And if you do not come to grips with this truth, it taints your perspective. And you will end up calling a blessing a curse. Because what occurs does not meet the expectations of what you thought it would be. God is teaching me that my greatest blessings often appear in the form of pain. That my greatest gain appears in the form of a loss. And that destiny often appears in the form of disappointment. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 8, Paul said, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, hear the man of God, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, refuse, that I may win Christ. I see it. Thank you, Jesus. Just look over and tell somebody it may not look like it. But the Holy Ghost, who cannot lie, says your winning season has already begun. The value of what you have lost is what determines your capacity to give. Those of you 
who have lost the most are the ones that God is about to use in the greatest magnitude. It doesn't happen every day, but Elder Caffey, over the course of a lifetime, over the course of a lifetime, there are three or four things that will happen in your life that change the way you live. Come on here. Those of us that have been around a while, there's about three or four things over a lifetime that change the way you live. And your remaining in the land of the living is the proof that God's best is ahead of you. Now you look around here and everybody looks well put together and everybody look like they're in their right mind and look blessed and prospered and favored. But that's only because we don't look like what we've been through. So anytime you see some of us Praising the Lord we, the way we do, it's because we have survived what was meant to take us out of here. We have to be careful, we have to be careful that we don't get stuck in wanting things to be the way they were. The insistence on things being the way they were preempts the opportunity for God to rebuild your life in the new form that he wants you to be. I'm telling you this morning, it doesn't matter how old you are, when this seeker's gathering is over, you are going to see your greatest self. So if you're thinking, oh, my, my best days are behind me, my, my strong years are behind me, the years of my dynamite, my dynamism, my innovation, and my creativity are over. If I be a man of God before September is over, God is going to renew your strength. Come on here. Lift your hands and say, Lord, renew my mind. Because I know some of you have been under it. I know it. I know it. I know it. So, the prophet says, Isaiah 43, Remember, O remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Shout now. It shall It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I'll even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I, I, God, uh, uh, Pastor Flores, is is testing my motives. 
And the last five places I went to preach, the Holy Ghost said, don't take an offering. Now, I have needs like anybody else. Got some things that I'm trying to take care of, catch up on, so forth and so on. And the last five times, God said, give that back. Give that to him. Give that to her. And I'm saying to all of the tithers and all of you that have been given to this church year after year, decade after decade, God said in a whirlwind, you are about to experience a, a download of a harvest of seeds you all sowed in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And see, I know the devil said, you, we could have used this money over here. We could have invested it there. We could have bought this. We could have done that. But God said, your latter is going to be greater than your former. And it's going to be supernatural. God does strange, great things. He does great things in strange places and in strange ways. The Lord spoke to me last night and said, tell the saints, get ready for mysterious victories. You're not even going to know how it happened, but it's going to be the result of somebody that been calling your name in prayer and God said I, I got to answer them now put this word all up and down your row mysterious miracles listen now listen to me under the balcony in the balcony you will miss Listen to me, Elder Oliver. You will miss the phenomenal trying to get back to the familiar. We as a church have to allow God to present the new iteration of Calvary. And it's not that the past was not great. It was. It's not that the past was not awesome. It was. It's not that God did not work miracle signs and wonders. He did. But the difference between old Calvary and new Calvary was that in the old iteration of the church, God did most of those miracles through Bishop Wagner. But in this season, he's going to do it through you. I wish you could see what's in your hands. And if you'll clap your hands like you believe the scripture that says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, a power from God will come in your hands this morning. When these folk come in here for this seekers gathering when they shake your hand all them all night prayer meetings y'all used to have all them 6 a.m. Sunday morning prayer all those three day fast with no food or water they go all come together during this seekers gathering and I'm telling you when you make physical contact with these people now, every yoke that has been over listen listen every yoke that has been over their life and yours will be broken now, because the Bible said now, when Job prayed for his friends now, God turned his captivity. 
I dare you to find somebody on your roll and praise God for them and watch what God does for you on this week. I need you to tell everybody and look all around you, you're going to be all right. Oh, yeah, you are. I, I'll guarantee you that. I'm going to make sure of it. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to make sure you come up out of this heaviness. I'm going to make sure you don't die in this valley. I'm going to make sure that I don't let go of the horns of the altar until all your children are in their place in God. My name is Hashem Yes. Look up Masha. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. One hallelujah won't work. Well, Joshua, that's a long walk. Can't we just walk around these walls one day? No. One hallelujah won't work. Two angels under the balcony. One on that side, one on that side. God going to bless everybody under that balcony with an unexpected blessing on this week. That's why the angels showed up back there. Watch this now. Have your seat for a second. I see something. Glory to God. Ooh. How many have ever heard the saying, if it ain't one thing, it's another? Let me see your hand. I'm going to tell you why one hallelujah won't work. See, some of you think you've done something if you said, thank you, Jesus. You think you did something. You said, hallelujah. Oh, glory. Nah. You've heard the saying, if it ain't one thing, it's another. I'm going to take 60 seconds here because the Lord told me on last night, whatever's going on in the room with the saints that is of a demonic origin, I'm going to cast it to the ground on this morning and tell the saints this is how it's going to happen. If it ain't one praise, it's another. So if the Toda didn't work, go get a Yada. Iba Sababasa. If the Yada praise didn't work, go get a Shabbat. But if it ain't one praise, it's another. Let the high praise be in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand. Your praise will turn it in your favor. If it ain't one praise. Let me hear you say mysterious miracles. Watch this. We have to stop judging what God wants to do 
on the inside of us based on what we see on the outside of us. God never works from the outside in. He always works from the inside out. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. It has to begin, transformation begins on the soulical level. God never begins a new creation. He never begins a new season. He never initiates a new situation with what is seen. Never. New always begins with what is not seen. I know I don't see no change. I don't see no difference. I don't feel any different. It doesn't seem like anything is changing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things. So then, if there is any kind of obstruction in your spirit, it might be an attitude. It might be a disposition. It might be a thought pattern. It might be a grudge. It might be a misperception. It may be a case of mistaken identity. Whatever it is that lies beneath the surface. And see, that's the problem, Brother Chairman. A lot of people only have a surface salvation. They don't have any real depth in God. They live in the shallow end of the pool in the spirit. But to most say, but when God has determined, I'm going to use this man. When God has said in his spirit, I've got to get the glory out of this sister. God will tear your whole life apart to get to your heart. See, you thought it was the devil. It's not. See, saints, God is not concerned about saving your image. What he's doing right now is preserving your future. So you got to tear your whole life down to get to your heart because it is out of your heart that proceeds the issues of life. You're not going to like what I'm about to tell you, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. Your broken heart is the best thing that ever happened to you. Because your heart and wandered off to some other God. I was reading an article about what is called our assumptive world. This simply means that we make certain assumptions about life and about people. Often, our assumptions are unstated. But deep down, we tend to think that if we do things a certain way, people will react in a certain way. 
Then, when we are confronted with the inevitable disappointments that life and people will bring, then what the devil does, he wants to move us into a mental and an emotional state of despair. Because when you live in an assumptive world, you say, I can't believe this is happening to Ask your neighbor, why not you? The scripture said, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Thank you, Jesus. Beloved. Beloved. Think it not strange. Concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Look at somebody and tell them, it happened to me for you. This is where I need those that God has reached down in the lowest valley and brought your mind up out of a dark place. Renewed your mind and restored your soul. I need you to let God use you to minister to somebody right now and just touch them and tell them you're coming out of this alive. Deacon Levels. This was Job's wife's problem. This was Job's wife's problem. She says, You done been serving God, keeping your heart and your hands clean, covering these kids gatekeeper in the city even God himself said you were perfect upright eschewed evil if your God is so good why is this happening to you you see when you live in an assumptive world when your expectations of life are not met, you'll curse the God that saved you. But when your soul is anchored in God, you'll lift your hands in the midst of the storm and say, though he slay me, I'm going to die trusting him. With my last breath, I will say, God is worthy of my worship and my praise, my adoration, my loyalty, my faith, my confidence. You see, there is a high correlation between misplaced assumption and a variety of physical and emotional ailments, including depression. Simply put, we are disappointed when things don't go the way we thought they would. So then, wrong expectations lead to disappointment Disappointment leads to despair, and despair leads to defeat. I've got to get ready to leave you now. 
But, Dad, Smith, the question must be asked, why was the older generation of Jews disappointed? They were disappointed because they remembered how good things used to be. Woo, come on, Holy Ghost. Look at something with me in Ezra chapter 3 and verse number 8. I wish I had a little more time. Ezra chapter 3 and verse number 8. Thank you, Jesus. Now in the second year of their coming into the house of God at Jerusalem, in the second month began Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatiel, and Yeshua, the son of Jezadok, and the remnant, say the remnant. the remnant. Say, I'm a part of the remnant. And the remnant of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all they that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem, and appointed to the Levites, there they dominion again, 20 years old and upward, to set forward the work of the house of the Lord. The year is 537 B.C. The location is Jerusalem. Now the Jews have just returned from a long captivity in Babylon. Some were displaced from the homeland for 70 years. There was another group that had been displaced for 50 years. There was an older group that was brought to Babylon. They were brought to Babylon. Then there was another group that was born in Babylon. They were sent into captivity as a part of God's judgment on generations of disobedience. Now, in this text, the last wave of Jews is returning, the first wave is returning to the land. But when they get back, everything had changed. The countryside is now in the control of their enemies. The city of David is now lying in ruins. The walls have been torn down. All the buildings have been burned and looted. And worst of all, the temple that had been constructed by Solomon some 500 years earlier is no more. The temple is gone. It's demolished. It is utterly destroyed. So complete was the devastation of the temple that it seemed as though that God had abandoned his original word concerning them. The Babylonians had taken all the gold, all the silver, all of the precious vessels, anything that was of value, they took it. The temple is raised. The Ark of the Covenant is gone. The altar is gone. The altar of sacrifice is gone. You know how I knew we were going to be all right when that fire happened here in this church? That entire prayer room was burned beyond repair, but the only thing that was not burned was the altar. I need you to look at somebody and tell them the secret power of Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church is the altar. So when they get back after this 50 year and 70 year captivity, the first thing they build is not the prayer tower. The first thing they build was not the dream center. The first thing they built was not affordable housing. 
the first thing they rebuilt was the altar. And that's why God has called the seekers gathering to Mount Calvary because God is getting ready to shift the United States to the prayers that go up from this altar. So after they rebuilt the altar, the second thing that they did was they relayed, they relayed the foundation of the temple. Now, I know some people are not going to like what I'm getting ready to say, but I have to give an account to God for every soul in this church, including my own. And the Lord said to me, Sean, you've allowed the church to go too far away from its foundation. And some of the things that we thought were just traditions, some of the things we thought, well, those are just, you know, Bishop Wagner's ways. God said, no. I have called this church to be a remnant in the earth that will hold to the standard of holiness and the exaltation of Jesus as God Almighty. And you, son, have allowed the church to go too far from the foundation because you want the people to like you. Love me or hate me, I've come to tell you, Holy Ghost is saying holiness or hell, period. We have to get back to our foundation of sanctification, spirituality, and spiritual uniqueness in a culture that has turned its back on the living God. So the Spirit said, make a distinction between light and darkness. Make a distinction between holy and unholy. So in the midst of this spiritual revival, and that's, I believe, what God has taken us into, God is taking us into a spiritual renewal, a spiritual revival, bringing us back to our true identity. So the third thing they do in this process, I'm sorry I'm a little long this morning. Give me about five more minutes. I, I'm definitely not going to finish this today. But just let me lay a foundation here. So they rebuild the altar, they lay the foundation, and then they pause in the midst of this process and they have a public praise service. Come on, Jesus. They pause and say, we want to have a public praise service that the vindicator will put on the front page. I want a, a public praise uh, that will be on 33 and 21. I want a praise uh, to come up from the church uh, that will be in the Buckeye Review. Because I want every demonic spirit in the city of Youngstown that said that Mount Calvary was going down. Uh, I want them to see uh, upon this rock uh, I built my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Lay your hand on somebody and tell them it's not how many you have. Tell them it's who you have. And tell them as long as you got Jesus and me, we gonna get the devil out of your house, out of your mind, out of your bank account, out of your spirit. We're going to do it with a public praise right now. Yeah. 
Some of you didn't budge. That's why you'll stay bound forever. And you got to do it in front of the whole church. You said, I praised him at home. I thanked him in the car. I worship him in the house. I bless him in the kitchen, in the living room. But the Holy Ghost said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father which is in heaven. So whatever it is that you've got going on in your life, in your family, in your health, with your children, with your marriage, in your spirit, in your mind, in your body, God said, I want your praise to come out of private and go into public because the devil that's been fighting you, I'm going to cast him under your feet in this service on today. While you're praising him, I want you to tell five people, God did it all. It was God. It was not by might. It was not by power. It was by my spirit. And if I be a man of God, the Lord said, if I did it for you, if I did it for you before, if you praise me again, I'll do it again. <laughs> Tell everybody on your row, no more mixed signals. What I mean by mixed signals, one part of the congregation was weeping over the past. The other part of the congregation was shouting for joy over the future. And the reason why the miracle signs and wonders have been put on hold in our midst is because we've been sending in heaven mixed signals. Those that were 70, 50 and above, they, <laughs> Solomon's temple is gone. The Holy of Holies is gone. The Ark of Bashida Bashemah, the Ark of the Covenant is gone. Nothing is the way that it used to be. Nothing feels the same. But the young people were having a praise break. Because God said, not am I just going to dwell in the physical house of brick, stone, and mortar, but I'm going to inhabit the praises of the people so that they become living epistles. And everywhere you go, you're going to carry the glory with you. Everywhere you go, you're going to heal the sick and encourage the discouraged. Everywhere you go, you're going to cast out devils and move mountains and create opportunities and encourage the discouraged. I want Mount Calvary to praise God that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Take two minutes and flood the altar with worship. 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 Worship, worship, worship.
first the altar and then first adore me and then first pour out your soul and then first lay aside every weight and every sin and then those of you that can't reach the altar lift your hands in the aisles where you stand open your mouths and begin to worship you Come on up, worshipers. Come on up, worshipers. Let heaven hear you. Wash us, Lord. Cleanse us. Purify us, sanctify us, forgive us. We want to prioritize you again. We want to seek first the kingdom again. We want to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength again. And Lord, even though we have experienced some disappointments and some pain and some brokenness, we give you a yes. We yield to the will of God. We trust the choice of God. And we will wait on you. We'll stay before your face. We'll get back to this altar. We will rekindle the flame of fire that the light of the holiness of God will shine out of Calvary. That the city and the world may know that our God is holy, thrice holy. And all power in heaven, earth, and under the earth is in the hand of the only God, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. We lift. There is a sound that is pleasing in his ear sound of praises lifted in the atmosphere every time you lift your voice you need to know Jesus loves to hear the sound of praise let's sing it again there is a sound, everybody. There is a sound that is pleasing. That is pleasing to his ears. The sound of praise. The sound of praise. Lifted. Lifted into the atmosphere. Every time. Melody. A heart's melody. 
a song of praise. A song of praise to hear. It's music. It's music to his ears. Jesus loves. Jesus loves to hear the sound of praise. I need everybody here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sound. I feel him in the room. He loves to hear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sound. He loves to hear. He loves to hear. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. The sound. He loves to hear. He loves to hear. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Adore you. We adore you. The sound. He loves to hear. He loves to hear. We adore you. We adore you. The sound. He loves to hear. He loves to hear. There's none like you. There's none like you. The sound. Come on, everybody. There's none like you. There's none like you. The sound. We're getting ready to lift up this praise. Every hand lifted. Hallelujah. Come on, Cal. 
Calvary. I need some of you that have been here a while to show the new saints what we do when the glory Matarama Satanabo Satama Masereba Keadaba Matanabo Kobo Setara Masekama Setaya Mayabasebo Koteada we need you, Lord. We need you. We can't make it without you. Oh, Lord. Don't leave. Jesus.
amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. This altar is open now. If you are here, and you have not been baptized in Jesus' name and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, you're welcome to come to this altar now. God is here. You don't want to leave this place without turning your life over to God. We want to give you an opportunity to come. Are you here today? Are you here? You might have something that you want to confess and you want to talk to one of the ministers, one of the under shepherds. You're welcome to come. Are you here? God is here today. I thank God for his grace. He didn't have to come by and visit us today, but he chose to come, hallelujah, and meet every one of our needs. Every one of our needs are different, but God said, I'm going to meet every one of them today, and I thank God. Are you here? Thank you, altar evangelists. Before we leave from the house of God today, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings. We want to ask our officers to come at this time. Ministers of worship, they can come now. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your many blessings unto us today. Lord, we thank you for this offering which we are about to receive. We ask that you bless it. Bless those, Lord, who have to give and those who do not have anything. Lord, bless them and we'll forever give your name praise, glory, and honor because you are an awesome God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you need a tithing envelope at this time, you can raise your hand and the ministers of worship will come. I'm going to read our announcements um, for the remainder of this week while they're passing out the tithers. Today is Big Give Sunday as we concentrate on paying off the Faith in Action debt campaign. We are requesting 200 members to give 200 each by Sunday, November 19th. We're continuing to pray for the Rainey family and the loss of our dear brother, G. Laron Rainey. His, going, his homegoing information is in the foyer. Also praying for brother Will Johnson and the loss of his mother, Susie King, and praying for the Bowling and Brady families and the loss of their brother-in-law, Albert Stewart. California. 
the seekers gathering 21 day Daniel fast continues you can go on the website www.calvaryforyou.org for details and the fasting manual Tuesday's noon in-person Bible class lesson will be replayed at 7 p.m. on the YouTube channel and we will be in person at noon Thursday, September 14, Calvary Saturation Prayer and Exhortation from 6 to 7 p.m. Thursday is also our First Lady's birthday, First Lady Tyson, and we're honoring God for her. Let us bring our cards gift to celebrate her special day. And then Friday, September 15, Celebrate Recovery convenes from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Amen. Has everyone received their tithers? All right, we can stand at this time. Don't forget, we're going to receive our tithes and our offering, and then we're going to walk. We're going to walk for this offering. Those that are in the balcony will be served. You can come from the rear at this time. put our hands together and give God a praise. We thank God for meeting us in this house today. Just another brief announcement. We asking all of the brothers to meet Deacon Jamie Dissembly downstairs in the lower auditorium immediately following morning service. Amen. Let us stand for dismissal at this time. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we love you today, Lord. Hallelujah. There is nobody like you. You are an awesome God, and we bless your name. Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you go with the people of God as they leave this place. Lord, be pleased to dwell with us for the remainder of this day. Give us safe passageway wherever we go today, and we will forever give your name praise, glory, and honor. Lord, bless our pastor now, Renew, rejuvenate him now, renew his strength in the name of Jesus from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Bless him now 
and give him what he stands in need of. And we'll forever give your name praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.